welcome to another Eto podcast, nerdcasty thing. I am Sheep, otherwise known as Josh, and here with me is... It's me, it's Will, it's otherwise known as the Doctor of Who, or apparently soon to be the Trekkers of Stars, depending on the way Doctor Who shapes up for the rest of the year. Ah, very interesting. That's a spoiler mm. for me, a little bit. Um, but yes, welcome to the podcast, the... Uh, what are we? We're like a, a interstate podcast. Great. Good times. Yeah, that's what we are. I like it. Probably Australia's own. Let's just say that. I can't imagine anyone else is trying it. No, nah, I wouldn't imagine so either. Um, good. Good. So you've got some news. There's uh, not a whole very lot. Little. No. But it's happening. Uh, the, like the, the biggest, I guess, in a way, in the gaming world is that... Uh, the CEO of Sony was like in a in an interview with some random internet thing. Was like, oh yeah, having uh, next generation hardware is a necessary thing moving forward. So basically, we need to make a PS5 ASAP for some reason. Basically, cool is what that is. Yeah. Um, uh, along with this, we also like last week there was a patent by uh, Sony for it was it was what was it it was backwards compatibility via emulation. So basically, making sure that you can... The same thing that Xbox is doing, I guess, really. Put the disc in, you can play your old game. Cool. Yeah. So that's assumedly what the PS5 will have in it, which is good, I guess. Very good. Yeah, cool. Um, That's sweet. And the the next-gen thing, I guess, um, maybe some of these companies like uh, Bethesda and stuff, who sort of mentioned at E3 this year that they have games for next gen mm, coming like cyberpunk and stuff maybe yeah maybe they're really starting to to push their research and development into next gen yeah, for them to push it for that because we haven't got a date for cyberpunk and 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 i mean elder scrolls 160 so yeah. you know they're probably going to be next gen things with probably like cross console like if it's you know maybe it'll be on both because yeah money yeah. but yeah i guess we'll see uh, yeah, and the only other bit of news I can think of off the top of my head is uh, that Avengers 4 has finished wrapping, it finished wrapping, or it has wrapped uh, mm-hmm. quite recently, and uh, that was reshoots. So they finished filming, and I think they've had like two blocks of reshoots, which is important to note, because at the end of this month, the Fox-Disney deal goes through. So the fact that reshoots were happening so close to this deal being completely confirmed, it makes me a little bit intrigued what they were reshooting. Yeah, cool. Mm. Mm. So, with a little bit of a little bit of, a little bit of thoughts there. So, um, yeah, but that's kind of it in terms of news. All right. Well, that's <laughs> fine, I guess. Yeah, this, the, we've got a big topic uh, that you can introduce right now. We do. Yes. Finally, after what, like seven weeks or something, probably more. Some, yeah. Something uh, like that. We have finally reached the end of our first month. I say in inverted <laughs> commas. Uh, of our comic book club. I'm very excited. Uh, So we have finished reading Watchmen. Will read it in like two days or something. I did. I finished reading a a couple of minutes ago. You're insane. Um, Cool. And uh, yeah, I finished it on Friday and then watched the movie directly after. Um, Mm. And we got a whole bunch of fans and people on Facebook and stuff giving us some of their feedback on it as well. And I have that all with me now, and I'm, I'm just very excited that this happened. Good. Um, yeah. I, uh, I'm, before I'm, we dive in, yeah. just it, it's full, all cards on the table, all badges with smiley faces on, on the table. We're going to be talking all things about the various forms of Watchmen, so if you haven't read or seen it, dive out, go read and see it and come back, or if you just want to hear people talking about it, by all means, stick around. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Maybe what we tell you about it will spur you to want to go read it. Yeah. And I think Will and I would both recommend you read it before you watch it. Before you watch it. Because Will did not so much enjoy reading it because he watched the movie, well, some of it a couple of months ago. Yeah. And was not so impressed, but knew a lot of what was happening already, which may have spoiled it. So... Yes. Yeah. I suggest. Uh, if, I mean, if the movie's out of your mind, by all means, read. But if yeah. it's, uh, yeah, yeah, comic first. Very much so. Yeah. That's that's basically what happened to me because I saw it in two thousand nine when the movie was released at cinemas, mm-hmm. and I didn't remember 
like anything other good. than freaking Rorschach saying Rorschach's journal so many times and it's so <laughs> good. Uh, it's like my favorite thing is just Rorschach saying his journal stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like so a cool. Christopher Nolan Batman impression. Yeah, pretty much. It's like word for word. Uh, it's great. Um, cool. But Watchmen, uh, written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Dave Gibbons. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, a bit of a, a very uh, shortened storyline uh well description what do you say whatever what the thing was about blurb synopsis that yeah yeah synopsis all right so we have an alternate universe in 1985 uh superheroes have existed for a number of decades um but they're actually not super they're just normal people that dress up and and fight really well and just want the world to be a better place um the so they've been around for a while now um the first generation have retired and they're all like sort of 60 70 years old um and the second generation came in but they have now been outlawed by the government and they're now sort of in their their late 30s early 40s i guess so they're sort of middle age uh types of people um some of the previous generations retired due to uh the I guess the the coming of Dr. Manhattan, who most people would know as the big blue naked guy. Um, With the dong. It's, it's just that, that swing in his swinger. Um, and he was basically a, a uh, government scientist who was accidentally obliterated by radiation. So most, I guess most superheroes, they, uh, they get some sort of radiation poisoning and that's how they become super. But this guy just straight up explodes. Yeah. There's just nothing left. There's none of him. Yeah. But somehow, he pieces himself back together, like, atom by atom. Um, So, over a couple of panels in the comic, you see first he appears as just a set of, like, like, basically a nervous system. And then bones, and then muscles on the bones, and then flesh. Um, And through that whole process that allows him to basically see the entire universe in a completely different way and he understands things down to an atomic level so he's basically the smartest thing in the universe Mm. and he can create things by thinking about it he's essentially a god yeah he's god amongst men or just yeah or just straight up god since he can create (laughs) stuff um it's nuts uh so a lot of these uh, retired superheroes, uh, well, a lot of the superheroes retired because he came and they're like, well, there's no use for us to be around because this guy can do anything. We're just mm-hmm. human. So a lot of those guys disappear, but other people come and replace them just out of a sense of duty. Um, but uh, a bunch of these heroes uh, start to be murdered, both the old ones and also some of the uh, the newer ones start to be murdered by someone um, and a crazy anti-hero called Rorschach who I mentioned before and he's just great and insane uh, wants to find out who um, so he gets his old partner and they track down the murderer to Antarctica um, so spoilers for that it was the richest and one of the smartest of the retired heroes uh, one of the one of the young guys Ozzy Mandius who, as you'd imagine, uh, basically lived off the the look on my works, ye mighty and despair mantra. Um, that whole thing from the Ozymandias uh, Odyssey thingy. Uh, yeah, and he believed he could save the world by essentially causing mass devastation, which mm-hmm. he would hope would bring the entire world back together. And this is actually what he does. They... These two think they're about to stop him, but he's like, no, nah, I I started this whole thing, like, 20 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> 35 minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. And so half of New York is destroyed, um, and the nuclear war that had almost begun between, like, Russia and the Middle East and America um, was completely ceased, and the world banded together to fight what they believed was evil. Um which is different in both the movie and the comic, which is why I have not gone into too much detail about that, because we 
should discuss those mm. separately. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, so even though he just like killed and destroyed all these people, they, uh, the whole world banded together and went, wow, there's this even bigger evil. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should band together. Um, so it's a very dark, bleak way to save the world, but it basically works. And then the heroes that turned up to fight him realize that they can't, they can't say anything about this or what happened because he has brought together world peace. So if they say, oh, this was all just a ploy to get this to happen, then everyone will start fighting again and nuclear war will ensue and basically the whole world might blow up. So they know why and how this has happened, but they're not, they can't say anything in fear of destroying the world again, which is crazy. It's a very, very clever thing. I yeah. really like it. It's a little bit Thanos. <laughs> it is a little bit Thanos. Yeah. Yeah. It is a bit. <laughs> Did I miss anything in particular? Not necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, Rorschach goes out and Manhattan's like, where the fuck are you going? And he just blows him in half. Well, into everything. Yes, uh, Rorschach is the one person who wants to save him. Yeah, well, but to, uh, apart to, from that. Yeah, to release everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, Dr. Manhattan, who is basically the one who goes, nah, we actually can't say anything. He sort of disappears, but he's like, like, life intrigues me. I think, I think I'm going to go, go somewhere make else. some. And then he just disappears, and yeah. uh, that's where people believe, well, there's sort of rumours that he was the one who created the DC universe, uh, <laughs> because this is a DC comic, technically, but not like Vertigo in the same something. universe as Batman and Superman and stuff. Yeah. So, we, we don't know that for sure. Um, there is a current run of uh, DC comics, which is an actual Watchmen and DC crossover, Um with all the guys from Watchmen and your your Justice League and stuff um, together. Excuse me, I just burped. Nice. Uh, yes, but they're only like seven issues into that 12-issue yeah. run at the moment, so not too sure. What's a happening? Mm-hmm. What a weird thing if it is that he does create the DC Universe. Yeah, yeah, whether they just take that whole... Uh, that whole rumor on board and they're like yeah yep, that happened like would that be okay <laughs> yeah. like i feel like it's a fun idea but i don't know if people want you know a meta canon like you mm. know no one knows why the marvel universe exists like it just does yeah. so i don't know if you need a reason that comics have existed like that universe yeah totally. and if it's f- someone else from a different comic doing it because mm. that also like i don't know that plays with the Watchmen lore as well. <laughs> like, it's a friggin' intense thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it would be it would be very interesting. I, I want to get onto it, but I read mm-hmm. today that you need to read... So, obviously, there's Watchmen. You need to have read Watchmen. There's, like, sort of a Flash Batman-y, like, prequel to Doomsday Clock, mm-hmm. which I have and haven't read. But apparently, you should also read uh, Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. Which is quite a beast in itself. I've read that. It is a long one. Yep. So I would like to get onto that at some point um, and get through that so that I can completely understand uh, the Doomsday Clock, uh, which is this big crossover event happening. But uh, we'll get to that at some point in the future. Yes. Um, cool. So I guess the, the two different endings... Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know... Because you didn't watch the whole movie, right? Uh, I just watched the end of it to, this afternoon as well. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. So, basically, in the comic, it's a... It's I, I, it's probably a good idea that they didn't do it exactly how it was in the comic, because it was a, yeah. pretty far-fetched and weird, and that's... It's like... It's the, almost the same idea. It's just they've, they've put it into a, a more contextually understandable thing. Yes. Yeah. Something that's not as, as abstract. Um, Stupid. Yeah, pretty much. But <laughs> comics, man. Um, yeah, it's like a naughty, naughty superhero film. Yeah, yeah. So the comics, um, basically, this big bad guy, uh, Ozymandias, he gets all of the artists and writers and creators 
in the world. Well, not all of them, but a whole bunch of them. The best. He, the yeah. weirdest. And he takes them to an island, and he gets them to basically construct this crazy beast, um, which just looks like a giant alien octopus thing. And so they they design it, and they build it, and they fill it with, like, all these weird telepathic, crazy, intense stories. Um, and the way that he destroys Manhattan is he just makes it appear in Manhattan. So <laughs> it's giant, like it's it's city-sized almost, but it appears in the middle of it. So it's like matter appearing inside other matter, which doesn't work, and so things just explode. Because um, if some if something suddenly appeared inside something else, that's just that's not how anything ever works. You can't yeah. do that. Um, those atoms will just freak out, and stuff just explodes everywhere. Um, the telepathic part, once it appears, it basically just sends out these crazy signals, which make people have these visions and thoughts and images in their head that makes them insane. So anyone that doesn't die in the insane explosion um of this thing just appearing in them or on them or around them or whatever um anyone that survives that basically goes insane (laughs) um because of all these crazy dark things that they start imagining um all written by these these creatives that this guy has that's basically it and it's i think it's like a um he basically wants the world to believe that aliens could yeah. invade them. Um, and so that's why everyone bands together and they're like, well, there's a there's an intergalactic threat which is much bigger than us. We need to band together to fight this in case they're actually going to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that part. Uh, that's the comic. The movie, though, um, basically it's a giant like radiation bomb. Yeah. And everyone who was already essentially afraid of Dr. Manhattan at this stage because of a whole bunch of things that were said on television and stuff like that, um, they all believe that he caused it because he yep. is the radiation he is, guy. Yeah. He's just a radiation man. You That's call it. Him radioactive man. Pretty much. But, uh, I believe Matt Groening copyrighted that. Yeah. But I mean, after this comment. Oh, this yeah. comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I they the whole world bands together to then defend themselves against dr manhattan but obviously he goes off and just creates life somewhere else um and does whatever the hell he wants because he is basically omnipotent yeah um yeah so those, those are the two different things i think it was probably a very good idea for them to do what they did in changing it for the movie because the comic book is insane yeah um, it's like uh, it's like the dude rewriting Ready Player One because he's like, you know what? Half of my book didn't make any sense. Let me give. I'm gonna have another go at this. Let's just make this make a little bit more sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. It didn't work though. <laughs> um, yeah, but I I think this was a good idea. Um, the comics idea is insane. It's very yeah. odd. Um, it's out of left field considering. Apart from Dr. Manhattan, there's nothing like that. Like, yeah. Everyone is human wearing a costume. There's no trace of aliens. Yeah, totally. And I guess, like, it's it's not an alien. It is actually a created beast. It is crafted, yeah. And but... part of Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias' scientific work together was doing teleportation-y stuff. Yeah. So I think that, that helped uh, Ozymandias be able to come up with this idea so i guess it wasn't overly far-fetched because it's not an actual alien yeah but it would have been really weird to see in a movie yeah this giant octopus just appear out of nowhere when there's very little lead up to it in the comic no even it's just like oh yeah i kind of want them to believe in aliens here's a mm. giant octopus like it's, oh what shit. the freaking heck um, they've seen a big floating elephant. They're like, oh, yeah, I mean, maybe that's real. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the elephant was real the whole time. <laughs> so odd. So odd. But, um, yeah. Anyway, that was weird, the weird comic. Um, very yeah. dark. Uh, but I guess on to our thoughts and then mm-hmm. the everyone else's thoughts. Yeah. Because uh, we have a few. 
Um, how how how'd you find this? What what are your what are your takeaways? I mean, I just feel like there's a lot of words for nothing. There is. It's very. It's very it's, wordy. It overly it took dense me a long time nothing. to read. My God, uh, and like the it's it's like the classic comics where the visuals speak for themselves. So it's mm. like I'm reading all these words, and then I look at the picture. And I'm like, yeah, no, I I, I could have got that. Like, yeah. she's clearly, be, well, she's clearly being raped. Like. Don't need any text on this whole entire panel, and you'll get the message across. Why am I reading text? Um, yeah. So far too much text. All those friggin' wordy things at the back of it. Get rid of them. Just don't need them. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's context, but put it in your comic. Get rid of some of the text and put it in your comic. <laughs> well, Finally yeah. Ingrate it. I um I I read some of them. I basically read the first ones, the ones that were yeah. the original night. Al's, like he, yeah, his diary, sort um, of diary uh, autobiography. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I read those. Those were pretty interesting. The rest I didn't read. Uh, I skimmed over some of the stuff, mm. but I I was interested in these. I thought these were very well written because it's like basically you just think about Alan Moore would have had to write in so many different styles. Mm. That's very clever on his part. Maybe it's not yep. entirely necessary, and it's a bit of extra law. You can totally skip over it; it's not needed. Yep. Um, but it's it's pretty impressive that he was able to write in so many different styles, like one person's autobiography in their own mind, and writing yep. the emotion for that character, and then writing like scientific writings um, about radiation and stuff from Doctor Manhattan, and then like an article about birds from uh the new like the the younger night owl who writes stuff about birds for newspapers and for magazines and stuff mm. um i mean it is the job of an author to be able to write in varying styles though so very i much guess it's so, just yeah. putting putting his putting his efforts into it rather than you know every single panel having eight thousand words yes you know he's got a place to to funnel his actual writing talents yeah. rather than just sort of Splaying it onto the images. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think um, it's it's impressive for him to have sort of, I guess, like you said, or like authors have these different sort of styles. Well, they should. Some probably mm. don't. There are probably many authors who just have a style of writing. But to be able to do it in so many different forms is quite unique, especially mm-hmm. for a comic book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Any uh, Anything else? Uh, I think that the whole series should have just been based on different... Like, each issue. Like, there's the Rorschach, there's the Dr. Manhattan issue. Mm-hmm. There just should have been, like, an issue per person that builds to a story, rather than, like, making it like any other comic book series. Because there's just sections where I'm like, I don't know what this means. Oh, now I get it. Like, the way that they structured the Dr. Manhattan one and the the Rorschach and the comedian one, they were interesting because it was focusing on the one character yep. building the law. I just couldn't give a shit when it was like flicking between different people. I just was so bored. That's so okay. boring. Cool, cool. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And uh, also, our man is the most boring character in the planet. He does nothing. <laughs> Everyone else has a thing. He's just like a dude, which is probably the point, but it's just like, I don't, you know one. And in the film, even more so, it's like, every time you're on screen, I want to cry. Hmm. Yeah. I think he's probably supposed to be the relatable one. Yeah, totally. Like the most relatable character in there, because nothing overly bad has happened to that guy. No. But he just wants to be a good guy, and he just wants the world to be in a good place. Yeah. Um, just but empty man. Yeah, for for a comic full of people with so much character. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's he comes across. He can come across a little bland. Yeah. Um. So I see. But- where you're coming from there, but yeah. Yeah, I know he does the job. And also, just like, I get it. It's a creation of its time. Like, people still think Citizen Kane's a good movie. This thing was a good movie when it came out. It's probably not now, but I get it. It's when it came out, it was a big thing. Now it's like, every, all this stuff's in everything. It's and done better. So, yeah. I get that people uh, still have nostalgic feelings for it. And maybe if you could delete your memory of the future. Um, it would be fun, but I just found it incredibly just mundane. Okay. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Yeah, I, I had a note here just saying, um, I wasn't, I don't know for sure 
but I feel like this could have been brown a uh, groundbreaking in its take on yeah. heroes being completely normal, unpowered people being outlawed like the incredible style and mm. having illnesses and mental health problems. Cause so many of them are just messed up Yeah. after this. Um, and I feel like that had potentially never been done or not, not been done to this extent before. Mm. Um, well, it was definitely wasn't the central theme of an entire comic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I feel like at the time, absolutely, this this would have been uh, just a remarkable piece of work. Um, and mm. some people would still classify it as that. But, uh, yeah, things have continued since then. Um, I did have a note uh, from Peter Allison, uh, one of our... One of our fans uh, and friends mm-hmm. who yep. said that uh, there was a lot of uh, writers in the 90s that tried to replicate this sort of story of and course, yeah. just it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, could have been due to the fact that the 90s was a terrible time for comic books. <laughs> um, but... No one wanted them. Why would you make them interesting? <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, I also just had... Uh, well, I sort of already said um, every character has very strong differing personalities and they seem to go through a fair bit of growth throughout this. Um, even the guy that doesn't seem to change much being Rorschach. Yeah. Uh, even he goes through a bit of a journey um, to death, I guess. But um, <laughs> becomes a little bit human, I think. Yeah, the- yeah. Especially when uh, when Night Owl goes off at him and is like, no wonder no people like no one likes you when you don't have any friends mm. and yeah. then he sort of goes well you're a good friend like mm-hmm. i'm sorry i know sometimes i am difficult and it's it's a good moment i think yeah um that's quite a powerful moment because rorschach is just nuts he's just a straight <laughs> up killer the whole time yeah um cool turns dogs heads into grapefruit yes Yes, that was gross. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I just loved uh, at the end of this, like at the end of the whole thing, the way that all of these random like one to two page sections of the comic that just c- seem to come out of nowhere are just pulled together. Like there's the shot of all of the the artists, like the creatives and stuff on a boat and they're just talking mm. about random crap. And I sort of skimmed over that because I'm like, I have no idea who these people are, why I'm reading this, <laughs> or what this is for. Um, and then it's pulled together at the end that they were, in that time, they were being sailed off to this island to create this stuff. Yep. Um, but because I didn't know these people or what they were talking about, I barely read it and I didn't <laughs> really take too much notice take of it. take it in, yeah. And, um, and then the, there was one point where the comedian... Uh, the guy that gets murdered right at the start who actually owns the little badge with blood on it mm. um, breaks into his arch nemesis's apartment drunk uh, years after both of them have retired and just starts saying this rambling um, I I didn't really take much notice of that either because it seemed completely random <laughs> but of then course. I went back afterwards yeah, yeah. and read through it and went huh yeah. He basically tells you everything. Mm-hmm. That's it's crazy. Like the beginning of Iron Man 1. Yeah. The whole plot, if you listen to, listen to yes. it properly. If you know how to, uh, if you know what Arabic it, like, or whatever. Yeah, it whatever the, the Middle Eastern <laughs> languages they talk at the start. Crazy. Um, yeah. Those are basically uh, my notes. I, yep. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed watching the movie after this mm-hmm. um, because of just how like almost one picture perfect this was yeah. yeah it's there's so many lines when i'm reading it i'm like i know this line but i'm like surely that wasn't in the film but the fact that i know it means it definitely was yeah yeah it absolutely was as as it was going i was like holy crap and i'd like open the book which i had next to me and just flick to the <laughs> page and i'd look at the panels and they were almost like piece for piece the the panels that were happening yeah the weird shot where suddenly um the Night Owl and uh, Sally, whatever it's Sally Jupiter, whatever the girl's name mm-hmm. is. No, 
Laura, La- yeah. Lauren, Lauren, Laurie. I don't know, Laurie. Yeah, yeah. Um, where they're like on another planet, and they unzip mm-hmm. each other's skin. Yeah, and yeah. they're in their costume, and then there's like this giant explosion, and they they get eradicated. <laughs> um, that is like almost exactly how the comic looks mm. in the movie. It's bizarre. It's nuts. Um, very very cool. And I I sort of like my jumped. craziest. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, I, I sort of jumped at, like, when they were saying some of their main lines. Mm-hmm. Um, like, the main lines that, that stood out to me when I was reading it, and they said it in the comic, I was uh, in the movie, I was like, oh, yes, they mm. did it, they did the thing. <laughs> so cool. My thing is, like, the, the, the sex scene, and then, like, the owl ship erupts fire. And when I watched the film, I was like, that was fucking dumb. And then it happens in the comic, I was like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn it! So they had to do it. It wasn't just Zack Snyder trying to be funny. Yeah, pretty much. No. Um, and also, Doctor Manhattan in the film. I know it's the point, but he sounds like he's reading the comic for the first time. Like all of his lines sound like he's never read the comic before, and he's reading it, and he's always surprised by the line he's reading. <laughs> like, <laughs> it yeah. just always sounds pretty weird. Yeah, which I know in, is the point. In my head, uh, when I was reading it. Like, because I absolutely did not remember how he sounded. I only yeah, remember yeah. how Rorschach sounded. So when I was reading Rorschach's lines, I was reading it how I remembered him in the comic. Yeah. Uh, in the in the movie. But Dr. Manhattan's lines, I was like reading Thanos as almost... Or something? Sorry? Like Thanos, like a big... Yeah, like a deep, like, rumbling yeah. voice. A black something. guy, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah. Just like a real powerful voice. But in, in the movie, mm. he's, like, nope. so soft. Yeah. It's like which I get, I, I get d- it, but it's just quite odd. Yeah, yeah, because he's he's just it's the, the most peaceful, understanding guy. Mm. Um, well, understanding of everything other than emotion. Yeah, but yeah, he's just like it's I'm just sorry, so I, soft. I don't know what you mean. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> A little bit creepy and weird. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's they 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 did a pretty good. A recreation, I think, mm. of the of the comic in the movie, at least visually. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's the same man that can't, like, make a very... Like, he can't even try and make a good recreation of a DC comic, so I don't know what happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how it's the same man. I he really don't. He should have just got a comic and, and yeah. like, made it panel for panel. He wanted to do The Dark Knight Returns yeah. or whatever in, in Batman vs Superman. He should have just done it. <laughs> We're so man. different. Um, yes. So uh, some some of what our fans thought. Um, mm. We have uh, the infamous Lucas, um, <laughs> the man who we talk about every podcast and all the time. Um, he he said he forgot how long it was. That was one of his <laughs> notes. Um, I didn't realize how long it was and how long it would take me because it took me so damn long. It was like 45 minutes an issue, I think. <laughs> um, up to an hour. Oh, man, I'm so slow at reading. <laughs> it's been a while. This is why I want to do this, so I yeah. read more. Sorry? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just saying, yeah, that's definitely been a while. Mm, yes. Uh, he also said this is one of the most adult comics he's ever... He said written. <laughs> Pretty sure he didn't write this, Lucas. Uh, oh, I think shock. he meant read. Yeah. Um, but his notes said written. Amazing. <laughs> Lucas Lucas is Alan Moore. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> he's so creative. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, he said he's undecided as to whether he prefers the comic or the movie ending. Yeah. Um, I think I prefer the movie. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I, I don't know either. I, f- I feel like I prefer the comic just mm. because of how ridiculous it is. Um, mm. And the I just loved... The first few panels of the last issue yeah. was just for the first time, no dialogue mm. on a single panel, and it was just Shock. different shots of the city with yeah. this giant octopus and all of these dead people. <laughs> and it was so, like, I think I got chills just looking at those pages. Yeah, I was right. like, whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> I um, think coming off the back of Maniac, I was like, stop being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> stop yeah, being okay, dumb. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, and on Facebook, he also commented. Uh, so all of that was on Discord. Um, yep. And on Facebook, he said, it's hard to say what hasn't been said already hundreds of times before. It's a masterpiece. 
I think I've said some new things. Yes, <laughs> about I think this you comic. have. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, having a look through on the internet as well, uh, I did a little bit bit of research on just the top comic books of all time. Yep. Uh, just to see where this stands, and it's pretty much on all of them. Yeah. Uh, most of the time in the top three. I. Uh, mm-hmm. With along with sort of like, like the Dark Knight stuff yep. and uh, things of that nature, but yeah, it's it's on most of the the top ones and ones that mm-hmm. it wasn't on. Often didn't have the biggest, like the they were didn't have the Batman for... ones and stuff. Yeah. It was super super like, indie. Let's be cool. <laughs> yeah, just things I've never heard of before. Yeah. Um. So I don't know where those were coming from, <laughs> but whatever. Um, also from our Discord, we have uh, Jade. Um, she just has an unstructured thought for everyone, mm-hmm. uh, which we can discuss a little bit here. It's pretty funny. Dr. Manhattan is a wee bit nude. Um, <laughs> but she said it actually ties into his character development. Audiences seem to accept this, uh, helped in part, um, I think, by the fact that you might not really notice because he's just so constantly naked. Um <laughs> Contrast this with the recent Black Label uh, Batman Damned debacle, uh, where, if if people didn't know, uh, Batman's penis has been revealed in a comic. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit of a shadow and a bit of a glimmer to make out some of the the uh, features, I guess. Um, she said, why, why is the line between serious drama and unintentional comedy so fine here? Followed by a, a Frankfurt in a bun That's emoji. It. There you go. Yeah. Um, I believe it's got a hot dog. I don't know why I was very specific. Frankfurt <laughs> in a bun. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, it, is a, it is a good question, though. Like, why do we care about whose dick is where? Yeah, I think it might Apart be... Apart from the comedians. It might be because, like, Dr. Manhattan it's like a was... stinger. Yeah, Dr. Manhattan was yeah. basically introduced as naked. Yeah. Almost the first thing we see, I think the first thing we see is his butt. Yeah. Definitely. Um but in uh with Batman, he's been around for what, like seventy years? Mm. Seventy five plus years now, I think. Um and it's just come up now. Well, I hope it had come up before that. He's had a lot of encounters <laughs> with Catwoman, but <laughs> uh, it is weird good. that it took so long, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure we've seen him partially naked i guess probably yeah. just the back the back half of him and stuff like that mm-hmm. um but yeah, i think frontage. it's yeah we haven't we haven't seen the front of him uh in law in canon before yeah i'm sure it's appeared online oh yeah 100 percent everywhere next to friggin bowsette At... oh, no probably um, um likely but yes yeah. uh i'd uh yeah i'd, I'd say it's it's become an issue because it just hasn't appeared before. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen it before, so it's just like, whoa, there it is. Um, <laughs> I guess that's it then. And it's just, it sort of, yeah, dropped out of nowhere, whereas Dr. Nice. Manhattan, straight up, it's he's naked from the start. Yeah. And it's just something you sort of accept. He's, he's more comfortable being naked, so that's what he does. Hmm. Cool. Any anything else on that one? No, really. I think the internet's a bit stupid and needs to calm down. <laughs> That's totally fair. Um, yeah. All right. Peter Allison's uh, review. I'll leave you this one to read. Oh uh, yes. You can, you can... I I was reading through it and I'm like, I can't, <laughs> I can't, like shorten this in any way. So no. I'm just gonna have to read through it. So please uh, sit tight. Bear with me. It's quite a paragraph, and he breaks <laughs> it down very well. Um, from this is this is a big fan of this comic. Uh, yeah. Watchmen was and remains a towering example of the possibilities of genre fiction and deconstruction. The culmination of Alan Moore's work up to that point, uh, having taken apart the tropes presented in Captain Britain, Marvel Man, and Swamp Thing, and rebuilt them all in an entirely surprising and dynamic way. Watchmen's key addition to s- superheroic canon is how it presents the grim reality of the archetypes uh in uh the psych there nah, nah, sorry here we go it's it's such a long paragraph i'm trying <laughs> to keep up with, with with tired eyes uh the psychology behind what would make people become uh costumed crime fighters 
the damage it would do to their psyches, the difficulties that, uh, that maintaining any sense of normality and the overwhelming needs to bring an end to the very thing that caused them to take up the mantle in the first place. As well as reconstructing character tropes in fascinating ways, it rebuilds history to suit its needs, from small details such as uh, superhero comics not existing because actual superheroes are in their midst, which I don't think is entirely true. I'm pretty sure uh, Superman exists, right? Yeah. Superhero they comics. Definitely talked about him. Pretty yeah. sure exists. Yeah. Um, to the bold, uh, which is the abridged Vietnam War and the extended reign of uh, Richard Nixon being the president. Um, mm-hmm. Watchmen isn't a fun comic. Uh, Zack Snyder's attempts to make it feel awesome in the comic, uh, in the film adaption, missing any of its key points. Uh, but it's one of those uh, compulsively readable, thought-provoking, and impossible to replicate, no matter how many far less insightful writers tried in the '90s. Uh, and Dave Gibbons' art perfectly matches Moore's intentions, utilizing a classical comic style reminiscent of the Silver Age stylings of Kurt Swan. I don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> with a bolder, uh, with a bolder update, updated feeling. I think he meant to say, um, never shying away from the very real violence, horror, and adult themes uh, that the book de- uh, deals with. Oh man, so close. Um, <laughs> and detailed to the ninth, uh, nth degree, uh, largely thanks to how Moore writes his scripts and details. Uh, Details piled on details, which is what you said and did not entirely enjoy. No. Um, he said, it's a real, really good book at the end. That was his final sentence. I love that. That's like, <laughs> after all that, that's, that's yeah, the stinger. That's his thing. <laughs> it's a real good book. And that's classic like, Peter as well. Yeah. But like, it's a funny, because book is what you would refer to it as, because it is like a solid novel oh, it's but it's a... like it's it's quite funny to hear book yeah yeah from everything that he described just then yeah the depth <laughs> it's a good that, book <laughs> the depth that he said was it's a good book <laughs> um and finally daniel beach who i don't know do you know daniel beach i do not awesome we have a fan we don't actually know um, hello daniel this is great hello welcome thank you for being part of this uh he said Watchmen is confronting and powerful. It has managed to change the role of the comic book or graphic novel in pop culture zeitgeist by seemingly uh, to vary from tradition. While it isn't necessarily unique in story or style, it's managed uh, it's managed to do this, in which he means uh, completely change the role of comic books. Mm-hmm. Um, its art style, though, is beautiful, and the writing is actually of a really high quality for a comic. Slightly disappointing movie adaptation, but still important piece of comic history. Which is fair. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to do a movie adaptation of a 12-issue comic that doesn't feel 12 issues. <laughs> yes. That yeah. feels 24. It does, yeah. It's massive. Man, it's so long. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, there you go. I think that's ah. pretty much all we got on that. Yeah. Um, that's it. <laughs> Cool. So I guess we can we can reveal our next uh, our next comic book club. We can indeed. Which is much shorter, probably much, much shorter. easier to get through. Yes. Um, and a lot of people may have actually read it already. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't. I don't think you have. I've read. No, I've read the first few volumes. I think. So uh, I've read a long time ago. Yeah. What? Yeah. Because when, when I wanted you, to watch the series, oh, you, ages ago. When have you when, done when, this, man? What when The, the Walking Dead first started, I wanted to watch it, and I was like, I watch. I want to read the book first. Far out. Okay, yeah. there you go. So um, that's what it is. It's yeah. The Walking Dead's first volume. There you go, volume one, uh, which I believe is the first six issues. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, so I I picked up. Uh, yeah, volume one. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> something caught in my throat. Um, mm-hmm. From my local comic book store, pretty sure it's six issues. Um, so just jump online and check what it is. Uh, and it's also yeah. probably available in your local uh, library because most of them have it. So yes, take a look there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can find it online. Uh, yes, but uh, that's that's going to be our next one. It's going to be much shorter because I would like to try and do a comic book club thing at the start of each month. So we're going to have a two-week one, because this is very yep. short. Yeah. Um, and we have chosen this because there is very little 
stuff happening in November yeah. that relates to a comic book yeah. other than the Walking Dead video game, which like, is not like, a... Like friggin' Battle Royale video game, but it's not, but it is. That's weird, yeah. yeah I, I, I've barely looked into it and I don't really know anything about it, but it's not a uh, Telltale, it's something else. No. And that's coming out and it's got a comic book, so we thought we'd read it. And I'm going to yeah. try and watch some of the the show as well to do a bit of a comparison uh, between the two as we did today. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have a another one ready for we do November, which we will do. reveal at the start of November. Yes. I'm very excited for this because I've been wanting to read it for a while, and this will be a good excuse and it'll force me to. Good. Uh, really good. Say on top of all the comic book cook, book comic comp- hang on, let's like comic book cook book club. Uh, you can jump on over to facebook.com slash each their own. We'll just post things. We'll be like, hey, it's almost time. Make sure you've read it. Um, and you can jump on there and also put your comments there, just like Peter and Daniel and Lucas did. Yes. Very good. And uh, if you if you want to talk to us a little bit more personally about this stuff, uh, you can jump onto our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash each to their own. Uh, just $2 will get you into our super secret Discord with a whole bunch of other awesome people. Um, to, yeah, just chat all of the things that we chat about, which is so much all the time, yeah. and our list of channels is growing. It like, is. Every week. There's a doc- There's a new Doctor Who one now. There is. Um, very good. But before before we finish up and wrap everything up, what have you been doing and watching and stuff this week? Uh, what have I been doing and watching and stuff this week? I have uh, just finished off the Venomverse series of comics, which was slightly disappointing compared to the, the Spider Verse one. Just kind of, it just felt really dumb because it was all it was just symbiotes infecting our usual heroes. So it was just became like a typical crossover comic. So there's nothing interesting, and okay. the threat wasn't all that interesting. But you know, it was like ten issues all up. So I was like, I'll I'll nom on that. Uh, wouldn't suggest it, but I would suggest Marvel Unlimited. Very good. Uh, and also, I finished up Maniac. Yeah, plug. Get that plug out there. <laughs> uh, Batman would. I finished up Maniac on Sunday, and I wish I hadn't. I wish I hadn't watched it at all, basically. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. What about yeah. you? Um, I've been playing Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I, I I got another. I got a game as well. But you keep going. Yeah. Cool. So um, yeah. I I had a bit of a, uh, first twenty minutes, which turned out to be like the first. 40-ish minutes um, <laughs> online, which you can check out on uh, youtube.com slash each to their own as well. Uh, that's that a good was sketch. Re- that was, sorry? That's a good sketch as well. Yeah, I tried, top, to, so. I tried to do a thing. That was pretty fun. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, you can you can check that out there. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I like the exploratory nature. I didn't go into too much detail at the end because I just wanted to play it. Um, <laughs> and... Yeah, I think I was just so excited that I I didn't talk about it too much. So I'll do it right now. Um, Yeah, I really like the exploratory uh, nature of it. So when you get a mission, it doesn't necessarily just give you a waypoint to go to straight away like every other game ever. Um, You actually have to do a bit of research. So when when you get the mission, you ask extra questions. Um, Often in other RPGs, you ask a question and it's just extra meaningless lore that does nothing for you. But in this, one or two of the questions are often like, where is this thing? Where am I going? And they'll give you a region. Every island and every area is broken up into regions. Um, And then within those regions, they have landmarks and stuff. So the person giving the mission says, ah, it's around this region uh, to the north near this landmark. And so you open up your map you mark generally where that would go and then you head there and then when you get close uh, it signals to you that you're pretty close and you send up your eagle uh, to sort of scout the area to find the exact location you need to go um, much like you do in Origins and stuff like that. So Ooh. I really dig that. Um, it's been it's been super fun. Not every mission is like that. Some missions just tell you straight up where to go. Um, but yeah, I've liked having a bit more of a hand in exploring and figuring out where to go and what to do, uh, which has been cool. Actually, I did a weird quest. It was part of the main line <laughs> where yeah. like, I did a quest for a dude 
and it was sort of a questionable quest and then it turns out this guy was evil um and when you find that out he like just kind of gets his guards on you and then you start getting attacked by them so you have to kill them but in that kerfuffle he gets away uh, um, right and then the next part of the storyline is this guy is still on the island i have to go find him mm-hmm. so but it, there's no waypoint or thing to tell you where he is and it's like a it's huge it's like an enormous island it's like <laughs> there is how the hell am i supposed to find this guy with no waypoint and there there was virtually no like hint of a location or region or anything so like i don't even know what's supposed to happen right now so i just went on like side quests and just went exploring like finding there's a bunch of question marks which are sort of the major landmarks so i was just going there um often there's a whole bunch of thing things to do there and i went to one which was this uh snake cave Ooh. and i went there i killed a bunch of enemies there because um, that was one of the things it said to do. And then I went inside the cave and I killed this guy. And then a cutscene started playing, and it was the guy. <laughs> it was the guy, Just like he was hiding in this cave. Mission. Total accident. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was great. And then the I could continue the main story. <laughs> it was really bizarre. Um, I'm hoping more of that doesn't happen, um, <laughs> because. It just was like such a fluke. I don't yeah. want to just fluke my way through this thing because yeah. um, I feel like that'll get more and more frustrating as time goes on and I was just lucky enough to have found this guy like two or three hours after <laughs> he'd first run away. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but man, that was weird. Like he was in, he was about two or three regions over as well. No. It's not like he was close to where he was before. God damn it. It was actually far away, but it was just a total fluke. It was bizarre. Um, there was also some, some super interesting things. I, I talked to a girl just, just before we started this who was giving me a quest, but the things she'd asked me to do I'd already done. And so my character said, actually, I've already taken care of those fake priests. Like, it's all good. And so the mm. quest was completed instantly. And I was like, wow, like they actually <laughs> took into account that you could have finished stuff. So they've recorded additional dialogue Frick. just in case that happens. What happened to Assassin's Creed? What are you doing? That's crazy. It was so cool. Um, yeah, really, really sick. Uh, the voice acting is amazing. Um, mm-hmm. I'm loving it. It's so fun uh, and, and interesting. Uh, all the voices are very like passionate or fun or quirky. Um, and, and very much, like, invested in what they're doing. Um, mm-hmm. Unlike things like Horizon Zero Dawn or Tomb Raider, where they're very Oof. bland. Um, both very good games, but, yeah, the voice acting and, and stuff like that, the, the facial expressions, just very bland. Um, yeah. So this has just taken it to a whole new level. Uh, I, I can't speak exactly for the guy character, if you choose to play as the guy. I've heard he's not as good as the girl, Cassandra, but man, she's great. Um, she's so sassy and funny and fun. Uh, yeah, she just, it's like when Lara Croft is talking to little kids and she's all playful and fun. Yeah. That's, that's what Cassandra is like all the time. Good. She's super fun. Um, yeah. So loving it. I, they keep giving me more things to do and unlocking new tabs in the pause menu, which is terrifying because some of these like tabs just have an immense amount of things to do so it's almost like spider-man slowly unlocking things but Mm -hmm. there was a lot less to do in (laughs) spider-man in those things you could finish those in like a couple of hours yeah this it's gonna take forever some of the things are like you've unlocked this thing good luck at level 50 okay what i'm level 15 right now what are you talking about um it's crazy so yeah it's this game has potentially too much to do i don't know whether i'll get around to actually doing much or any of it <laughs> uh but i'm really enjoying what i'm doing right now and and oh, oh. So, yeah i'm my goodness um just 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 before we started this i uh, there was a mention of the ones who came before 
Have you played mm-hmm. many Assassin's Creed? I don't think you have. I've played all of them, but oh. all the rest of Origins. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Far out. I didn't know you'd played like all the the original ones. Yeah, um, yeah. I I, oh, I didn't lend them off you because you had Xbox. Yes. So I bought them all. Far out. Way cool. back when. Okay. And you spot the ending of the last Desmond one with all the murders, and I was I like, I think that's okay. it's probably because I didn't know you were playing them. <laughs> yeah, but then I think we we had another car ride where I was like, so I've been playing it, and you're like, oh no, and I was like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You knew all this, but it's fine My that you bad. forgot. It's, it's classic me. Um, yeah. But yes, the ones who came before, which are like the weird spiritual god things that aren't actually yeah. gods, but are kind of gods that live. They never with... explained, and I was like, why are we not talking about this anymore? Yeah, they're back. Good. They mentioned them. Thank God. Oh, I hope more comes of that, because that was one of the most interesting, intriguing parts yeah. of the whole series. And then it was like, hey, do you want to come to an office when you're not an assassin? It's like, uh, no, not particularly. No, I don't. Um, ah, so, so bizarre. But yes, very excited that those are back. So I'm, yeah, I'm completely in on this game. If I wasn't Good. any more in already, I am in. <laughs> I mean, you've spent enough money, you'd hope you'd be in. Oh, yes. It cost me a little bit. <laughs> um, cool. You said you had a game as well. Yes, I finished off the first Gears of War game uh, the other day. Sick. It's good. Very meaty. Like it's the worst oh, gun yes. combat I've ever played, and I, but I, <laughs> but it's weirdly satisfying. But it's also like I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm just kind of aiming and holding it down, and then eventually they die. But uh, yeah. you know, it's certainly a game, and I'm certainly intrigued, and I want to get through them all so I can play what looks like a game I actually might enjoy in Gears Five. Yes, like, that um, looks like a game I want to play. <laughs> so Gears of War was released 12 years ago. Yeah. So this that's... is the ultimate edition that they've remastered quite recently though. Okay, so they've remastered it, but probably mm-hmm. the controls and stuff are likely yeah, maybe... to be very similar. Yeah, they might have taken it from like 3 because that's like similar okay. to what Uncharted did when they remastered them. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. But yeah, totally. It's certainly dated in story, but it's visually incredible like i don't know how remastered it is i feel like it's similar to the the master chief collection where it's like entirely remastered sure um, because the lighting is incredible everything's really good it's just oh when you die you're just like no i don't want to play you anymore because it just pushes you back to a point where you're like no you didn't need to put me here there's a point of silence between this bit and the other bit stop throwing me back here yeah this is a lot of dumb checkpoints ah fair enough yeah, um, I do. I remember playing it back when Xbox was the latest thing. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, I I remember enjoying it. Um, but I also wasn't overly into like major gore and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I I played it with friends and stuff like that at their houses. Um, yep. But yeah, never never really got into it. But I have wanted to since seeing the couple of gears things that are coming out mm. uh, like next very good, especially the pop vinyl game yeah that'll be a thing yeah what a what a thing that's happening yeah what a thing that'll be um but that's kind of is that all you've been doing you've been watching anything um no i don't think so other just uh oh, i watched um what is it bad times at bad times at the el, el royal which i won't yeah. talk about too much because you're going to see it yeah uh, and you saw The First Man? I saw First Man. Very good. Uh, I'm hopefully going to see it this weekend. Cool. As well? I think it's very divisive in its style. Interesting. Okay. It's just, yeah. It's, cool. it's a long one. So but you, en- you enjoyed it? I loved it, but I know people will absolutely despise it. Okay. Cool. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but both both movies we've been looking forward to, so it's exciting they're finally out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I did, despite what I said about... A Royale being weird, being I weird. did really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, good. So that's all I'll say. Um, I'm just hoping it's a, like, a, a Tarantino film with someone that has a brain, basically. Because the Tarantino films, I'm just like, I don't know what I'm watching, but this looks like a Tarantino film with yeah. someone that has some form of structure. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm very excited for. It's, uh, yeah, I, I think you'll enjoy it. So you're seeing it tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, I'm not too sure yet. Cool, cool. Very yeah, good. Back to back with Ladies in Black. I think it's called or something like that. It's an Aussie film, which I've been excited for. It's got Angari Rice, who you will either remember from Spider-Man Homecoming as Liz. No, not Liz. Uh, what's the one? Betty. Should we play Betty Brant? It's the, the blonde girl on the TV. 
Was that it? Was Betty uh, Brant? Because it's like newsreadery. So that's, that's yeah, why I took yeah, that character. Yeah. Um, and also from the nice guys, uh, Ryan Gosling's daughter in that film. So uh, excited yes. for that. Should be good fun. There's a bunch of other cool Aussie actresses in that. It's, a, it's very much a girl power film um, that might actually be good. Hello, cool. simple favor. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, uh, this week we have uh, Lego DC Supervillains coming out, Oy. which Will and I forgot about. Um, I just didn't realize that it was... Yeah, this week. That it was this week. Uh, so that's a thing happening. Are you going yeah. to jump on that? It's all sneaky pre-ordered, so yeah, I definitely will be. Very be giving, good. I, I don't know if it'll be a 20 minutes or a, an actual first bite, because I feel like as a Lego game, there'll be so much I want to get into your faces that it might be a proper look at it, like a proper yeah. cut down. Cool, cool, nice. Got to make my character. Got to make that fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm... Yeah, I'm keen. I'm intrigued by that game. Uh, it'll probably yeah. be a while before I get it because this set me back a lot. Plus, mm-hmm. I bought that you Zelda Red thing. Dead. Um, Red Dead, and in then a week. Red Dead. Yep. So probably as soon as Assassin's Creed finishes, I'll get Red Dead. <laughs> oh, buddy, what a couple of months it's going to be. Oh, I'm Pokemon next month. Oh God, man! But uh, speaking of next week, I'm coming down uh, on the Thursday or Wednesday. I don't know if you know, uh, but yes. I'll be in Melbourne uh, uh, for the PAX. The PAX is coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 26th, 27th, 28th, I think, believe it is, though, the numbers, right? Yes. Sounds like, seems like, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so make sure you're in Melbourne, because it'll be on, and you should totally come. Please come, hang out. Uh, we have a panel on the Saturday night at 9.30pm uh, in the Ibis Theatre. It's going to be fun and probably messy and uh, entertaining, and we need help. So please turn up, <laughs> because two of the people that were going to help us are not coming anymore. So we need you guys to we do. help, please. Yeah. So if you want to feed two grown men, come on down. Josh definitely <laughs> needs the help. Um, oh, do just I Just like day-to-day life, just cook him something. Pretty um, much. But into the next podcast, which will be about something, we don't actually know because it won't be a, a comic book club one, um, The Doctor of Who, yeah. Yeah. And Sheep is out. See you next week. Please come. Please come help. Please come help.